10 tools I just can't live without. Number one is definitely the Milwaukee Fastback. If you've been living under a rock and don't know what it is, it's a utility knife. Now, they do have their six in one option and I did eye it for some time and was kind of wondering, is it worth it, you know, just for the Phillips or the regular screwdriver? Yes. Yes, it is worth it. I'm telling you right now, this is the first tool I would go out and get if I broke, lost it, or just to pick up another one. A drill and impact combo kit. Now, I know what you're thinking. A combo kit with a DeWalt and a Hercules? No, the brand does not matter. The important thing is to pick up a drill and an impact driver, regardless of it, whether it's a, the Hercules or the DeWalt. Now, if you are in a situation where you can only pick up one or it's like, you know, Hercules, technically they don't have this in a combo kit with their impact yet, then I would definitely say get the impact driver over the drill. And that's because I've done another video where I actually show that this can do almost everything a drill can do. Pick these up regardless of the brand for the features that are just packed within these two electrical pliers now you might be thinking i don't have any electrical projects on the horizon i can guarantee you regardless every diy will come across a broken switch or outlet that needs replacing and in those cases electrical pliers are a must-have so it's definitely something that you want to pick up to have in your back pocket for those situations. Who knows, you may be like me and during my home remodel, I actually really liked doing the electrical side of things. And so since then, I've been able to add that many more electrical side of things to my projects. These two in combo, a framing square and circular saw can really do anything a miter saw or a table saw can. Within reason, okay? Obviously you're gonna have the woodworkers say you have to have the saw stop and Great, yes, they're nice, convenient, super expensive, but for the average DIY project, this is sufficient. When I was paying attention to the pros that helped me out with my framing for my home edition, they never pulled out a chop saw, miter saw, or a job saw, table saw. Ch woo. A miter saw or a table saw. They only used circular saws. The six and a half is the perfect size for the DIYer and really is my go to over my miter saw. If you've already got DeWalt tools, great, go out and get this one. If not, don't be a fool and start collecting yet another battery brand. I don't know who would honestly do that. And I am not sold on any brand of framing squares. This is the cheapest one you can get from Harbor Freight, and I was blown away at how accurate it was. So, sure, I'm gonna stick with that. Honorable mention, because it's not really a tool, but I would say pick up the 10-pack of Milwaukee gloves. These are just the cut level ones, so basically the lowest. You know, I've, I've had nice ones, cheap ones, Harbor Freight ones, a great general overall purpose glove that's not on the list. From plumbing to go-karts, I can't even list off how many projects I've used my set of pliers on. Now, brands don't matter. If you were just starting out, get a full set with all of these different kinds. Diagonal, needle nose, just regular. You know, you got your, your joint groove plier, channel locks, okay? That's what everyone really calls them. I bet you probably didn't know that these ones are actually called linesman's pliers. Having an entire cheap set, yes, I'm telling you right now, get the cheapest set you can. Like these ones were from a super old Pittsburgh brand. I think, I think they're actually got a black and green handle nowadays, but I mean, these still work great. And, but it's once you start using them, then you can make individual upgrades from there. Whether you want to call the shop vac a tool or not, I'm going to do it. And that's because, well, I wasn't really thinking about it until I tripped over it coming out to my garage to film this video that I realized the shop vac's actually the most used tool or accessory in my garage. And that's because I use it after every project. And I realized I don't have any videos of me actually using the vacuum. And that's because it's probably about as exciting as watching paint dry. So let's just keep going on. 
A basic socket set. Now, I know there are thousands of different socket sets out there, and if you don't have any socket set, I probably would go with the 3 8 socket over a quarter inch, but do make sure that you get one with both SAE and metric, just because us Americans, we want to be different. You'll notice that you will start making upgrades to impact sockets, deep wall sockets, those specialty sockets to get off that one lug nut on a one inch axle go-kart which if you care or not is one and seven sixteenths and that might tell you how many go-karts actually do to invest in this socket just to take off those axle nuts no do not go out and buy a snap-on set a very cheap simple harbor freight set will do Okay, I wasn't going to include a hammer and tape measure, and really I'm not even going to talk about a hammer. A hammer's a hammer. But if you are in the market for a tape measure, here's two things I want you to be aware of. First, if you're doing multiple metal projects, do not get a tape measure with a magnetic tip. Second, you'll notice that tape measures has a really cool feature of somewhere listed on it is actually the length of the tape measure. So. This Milwaukee is three and a half inches. Nice and simple. Well, Husky, how, uh, what's yours distance? Three and three sixteenths. Husky, what the heck are you thinking? Why would you not at least make it a nice quarter inch? Because honestly, who's going to be sitting there going, okay, great. I've got 23 and five eighths and I need to add three and three sixteenths. So just know if you're going to be using the length of the tape measure a lot, get one that's a nice easy round number and uh, maybe a non-magnetic tip. An honorable mention that I was going to throw in as number 10, just hold by themselves, are the little Knipex water pump pliers. These things are freaking awesome and you would almost think they're just a little kid toy. They're not. But something I use just slightly more would actually be... Um, an adjustable wrench set. So if you are just starting out and you don't have any of these, then pick up a set because you're gonna want more than one. And that's because I always use that in combo with my socket set. And that's mostly because you've only got one socket set. So you need something the other side to hold it. Then once you have a set of them, I would definitely make the jump up to a um, what do they call these? Pliers? A pliers wrench. So I'm assuming pliers because it's kind of a combination of pliers and an adjustable wrench. I love this Icon pair. Um, if they did have smaller ones, I would totally go down and get those as well to have a complete set. Nipex. Knipex. Now Knipex actually has a full set of the wrench style. The wrench being there's no grooves or anything like that, so it's... It's a wrench. I just can't see myself spending 60 bucks for this size. Icon, way to go. I love this pair of pliers. So coming in at number 10 would be a adjustable wrench set. Leave a comment and tell me what's on your list.